In coronavirus, 2020, we've seen a 36% increase in smart speaker usage. That's no accident. It's not just because people are home. So again, let's get started. First question is up for Emily. Emily, let's look at you know, the hottest topic in technology products today, obviously, has been the, the Alexa type products, but uh, an Echo type products. But what do brands need to understand about smart speakers in VAs like Alexa and Google Home? That's a great question. And I would start with looking at where is attention headed? So the most important thing when you're thinking about marketing is where are the eyes and ears? And if you look at consumer technology and devices, we are seeing that smart speakers are the fastest growing consumer technology of all time. They've outpaced radio, television, personal computer, smartphone. So there's a twofold reason for that. One, it's obviously the most convenient way to interact, voice first versus tap, type, and swipe. Like that tap, type, and swipe era is ending and giving way to voice first. But then the other part of it is the AI. So not only is the technology convenient, there's no learning curve. Anybody who can speak can use it. You don't need to be a digital native to figure it out. On top of that, there is the highly personalized ability that we have with AI to look at an individual user and give them what is essentially their own personal assistant, totally hands-free and not to mention germ-free. So in coronavirus, 2020, we've seen a 36% increase in smart speaker usage. That's no accident. It's not just because people are home. It's almost this perfect storm of, okay, so now the attention is really on these devices and they're becoming ubiquitous because you also have voice in the car, which happens to be actually the biggest use case for voice, more so than the home, more so than mobile. But bottom line, it's where is attention headed? We saw it go from desktop to mobile, greater convenience, your computer in your pocket, and now voice becomes ubiquitous. So as a marketer, I, I just urge clients to think of it like this is the early days of the internet again, put up your website, establish your voice presence. Yeah, and I absolutely love about thinking about it in sort of a contact-free, contactless lens that we speak about today. I, I'd love to see it in every elevator in the country, but to be us, you know, I think one of the biggest things that's going to make everybody rush towards voice could also be a problem in that we are going to flood a lot of stuff out there and then forget, uh, you know, hopefully brands won't, but a lot of brands will forget it really looking at, at that customer experience. So how should a brand look at leveraging voice in their marketing in order to drive a better customer experience? Yeah. So the way, we're seeing the world evolve. Emily's exactly right. Fastest adoption of a tech in history. But you have to position that a, a little bit against the fact that most brands at this point haven't seen their business revolutionized by voice the way it was revolutionized by the, mobile, the desktop and then mobile. And so um, what's going on there? Why is that happening? And I think because the exact right question is, what's the customer experience, the user experience issue. The reason people want to go to voice, as Emily said, it's more convenient and faster, but it's only more convenient and faster in many cases to speak and to transmit than it is to receive, right? So we speak two, three, four times as fast, depending on what we're typing and how old we are and how, how, how good we can type with our thumbs versus uh, typing. So we can speak much more quickly. We all want to speak, but listening is much slower than reading. And when you combine that with graphics, we can receive information from devices much faster than we can listen. We always use examples, right? So if you're interacting with Domino's, I'd love to be able to say to my Alexa speaker in my car on my mobile device, I'd love to be able to say, order me two pizzas, one with pepperoni, one with mushrooms and sausage, one with thin crust, one with thick. What I don't like then is Alexa reading that entire order back to me because that takes another 45 seconds to a minute. What I'd love is that order to then appear on my device. I can quickly look at it and say approved, right? And so that's the place that we, we feel many brands are going and that's where voice is going to start revolutionizing the end consumer experience and the employee experience in a lot of cases when we can command and transmit via voice but receive a lot of information um, graphically or via words that we can read. Well, speaking of listening, uh, Bolong, for somebody like you who works with Audible, 
being part of Amazon, a small little company, not a lot of people have heard of, of course, but you know, when you look at spoken content, which is more intuitive to voice, how are you really looking at voice marketing? Right. I think to me, to us, basically Audible being part of Amazon, there are certainly uh, advantages, but we also actually have challenges just like uh, every other brand when it comes to voice. I think the advantage is basically, if you think about the use cases from a customer's perspective, there are two major use cases um, on the voice platform. One is utility driven, right? So basically you want to know sp specific things. For example, where's my Amazon order, delivery order, or you know, what's the weather look like? So um, the, the advantage in that for us is basically we are the first party, uh, we're part of the first party platform. So we can, we can get a lot of data from the Amazon platform to understand, better understand basically how people are using voices right now. And then we can identify where are the basically the best opportunity for us to plug ourselves in? The second type of uh, use case is really it's entertainment, right? So for people, basically, they, they will ask, uh, ask for specific music or they, they would want to actually uh, ask for a sp specific book. So that's intuitive for us. But I think the challenge for us is uh, unlike music, which is more like a communal experience, basically you can put up, put up music as a background. Uh, spoken content or audiobooks are more like individual experience, at least traditionally speaking. So how can we actually make sure we can find the, the perfect moment and the perfect utterance for people to basically engage with spoken content on this public speaker is basically the, the use cases or challenges we have to, to, to solve for.